I'm going to release the email about racial profiling, and I understand that, that the penalty comes with potential ousting from the Senate. No senator deserves to sit on this committee or serve in the Senate, in my view, if they decide to be a law unto themselves. The document you're talking about has now been approved through the committee processes. It's been made public. The process worked. I learned from uh, Senator Lee that it had already been worked out that this was going to be then released to the public. So all of this uh, drama uh, this morning apparently was for nothing. Well, the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearings are continuing at this hour. Uh, the question continuing. Senator Cory Booker just finished his next round in which he tried to get uh, Brett Kavanaugh to say that he would recuse himself with anything dealing with Robert Mueller if he becomes a Supreme Court justice. This all started this morning, uh, and it was quite a moment as this hearing began with Senator Booker saying it was his I am Spartacus moment, releasing documents that he wasn't supposed to release. Turns out they were cleared for release overnight. Let's bring in our panel. Matthew Cottonetti, editor-in-chief of the Washington Free Beacon. Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief at USA Today. And Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist. Uh, Matthew, this was something. I mean, it was just a spectacle to start this hearing. We've seen this really now three days in a row. But it turns out that it didn't need to be a spectacle. That's right. Cornyn, uh, Senator Cornyn said, well, all of this was for nothing. I'm not sure that's true. What this was for was Cory Booker's 2020 presidential campaign. And indeed, he launched his um, fundraising campaign yesterday, and then it carried on into the discussion over the email. Of course, he's not the only member of this uh, committee who's planning a run for president. His colleague Kamala Harris is also uh, thinking of running for in 2020, and she too has led a line of questioning that kind of uh, baffled or uh, kept uh, Kavanaugh kind of on his toes. This is in reference to his con uh, any conversations he might have had. He, he says he had none with the members of the Kazowitz law firm that had represented Donald Trump. So this is not just uh, Supreme Court politics. It's presidential politics in a way that I don't think is actually working out for some of the Democratic aspirants. One of the documents they released, or what we're really fighting over, Susan, was about racial profiling. And in it, um, Kavanaugh writes an email in which he says it should be racial neutral. Uh, that doesn't seem too controversial. Well, I, I guess I agree that there's uh, politics beyond the Supreme Court fight itself uh, exhibited uh, at the committee today. Not, probably not just two people on that committee who wants to be president. Probably most of the Democrats in the U.S. Senate uh, think that uh, they ought to be president. Um, it, I thought it was a, a peculiar exchange, uh, kind of hard to explain. Probably that maybe doesn't rebound in the way that Senator uh, Cory Booker had, had had hoped. I do think this is, though, the new Democratic Party we're going to see from now on. The energy in the Democratic Party, the base of the Democratic Party, is demanding a stronger, more disruptive, more aggressive action by the people who want to lead it. We've seen that in the primaries uh, we may, that we've had so far. We may see in the Delaware primary tonight. We'll be watching for that. Uh, that this is going to be, this is the face of the Democratic Party now. That's going to take on the Trump administration in a more frontal way. Or at least show that you are. At least, at least look like you are. But fight, fight harder, even right. if you don't have here's ammunition a, that's going to deliver. Here's Senator Booker vowing to continue uh, to release documents. They released those documents after I had already read for them and broke their sham of a rule. And if you look at what I'm doing all day today, I continue to release committee confidential documents. Now, they're going to run and maybe try to release, say they're okay afterwards, but I will continue throughout this day, release documents that they're trying to hide from the public. Okay, so he's trying to explain why he was putting on that, that big show after they had negotiated the release of these documents overnight. There is a process, and Mike Lee worked with Booker to do just that. Now he's saying he's going to release more documents to show that he's not standing up to the rule. I well, guess. and at this point, all of the documents that he has made requests that they be public have been made public, and I think he should probably have faith in the process. But that's not what this is really about, of course. And I think it's interesting. We've spent the last couple of weeks being told that Donald Trump is some sort of unique narcissist who violates norms and makes himself the center of attention, and that everyone else in D.C. is just so wonderful. And yet, you watch the hearings like we have had to watch for the last three days, and you see that, in fact, this is not unique behavior to Donald Trump, that there are quite a few people who engage 
engage in this type of behavior. And if you want to know more about Kavanaugh, you have been able to see that a little bit. I think Ben Sass had a really good discussion about the administrative state with, with uh, Kavanaugh, where he explained a little bit more about his views there. Ted Cruz had a good conversation about judicial activism. These are probably the issues we should be concerned about rather than grandstanding stunts. Uh, Tom Tillis uh, from North Carolina now doing the questioning. Susan, one of the documents that got a lot of attention today was uh, an email about uh, pro-choice op-eds in support of this justice that he was preparing. And he says, I'm not sure that all legal scholars refer to Roe as the settled law, this is Roe v. Wade, uh, of the land as the Supreme Court level, since court can always overrule its precedent and three current justices on the court would do so. That was heralded as, as this big moment saying that he would then overrule precedent and thereby this is how he would rule. He answered the question saying he was pointing that legal scholars kind of dealt with it effectively, but that's really where this goes down to, is uh, Susan Collins, Republican from Maine, and Lisa Murkowski. This was a crucial point that Senator Collins pointed out, pointed to after she met with uh, with Judge Kavanaugh, which is if you think that she wants a, she wants to vote for a justice who believes that Roe v. Wade is settled law. Uh, so this is actually an important point. The, the, the paper that they released, the language they released, doesn't make it clear where he stands on this, he's pointing out, but it does raise an issue that's been important to her and Lisa Murkowski. The, f the fact is that is the issue that has the best potential to give him some trouble as it, on his road to, to, to a confirmation, although it's not clear that it's, it's done that. But it is, does seem more on point than the, than the other document that Senator Booker was putting out. And we have yet to hear the second round of questioning from Kamala Harris from California. Uh, she was kind of, uh, had a, a round of questions asking whether he had talked to anybody about the Mueller investigation in, in a law firm. We may hear from her in a little bit. There she s sits next to uh, Cory Booker uh, getting ready. Uh, what about that, Matthew? I mean, essentially, they're looking for him to recuse himself should something come before the Supreme Court. Unlikely to happen. You know, Donald Trump has been very good at nominating judges to the bench who have track records and decisions that people can refer to. And I think what we're seeing with Judge Kavanaugh's testimony is the upside and the downside to that. The downside is you have emails from 15 years ago that become the hot topic debate, and we, we try to read into them different motives. And he's been relatively good at batting back those accusations. The upside is we have a pretty good idea, a very good idea, of how he would rule once he's on the Supreme Court, and that is as an originalist and a constitutionalist. He has answered a lot of questions with detail. We're going to leave it here.